Praise the name of the Lord. Turn that one next to you and give him a big hug. Now turn to one on the other side and give them a big hug. Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And you talk about a peace and a freedom. I don't think there's anything better than a Jesus high. I mean, I'm talking about a Jesus high. Everything else seems to wear off. And then you sober up, oh my land. But not with a Jesus high. You know, I think one of the girls was talking about, you know, everybody don't look so happy in here this morning. But you know the reason for that is? Because you haven't let God be God. You let God be God, I'm going to tell you something. He's going to get you past it all. I don't care if you're an old grouch or not. He's going to get you past that. I don't care if the whole roof collapsed in your life God said all things work together for good and he says by the way the battle's mine not yours watch what I can do and you go have it just let him do it that's the dumbest thing why don't you just let God do it get out of the way what are you carrying carrying a heavy load for you he said come on to me all you labor heavy laden I'll carry it take he says take my yoke upon you learn of me I'm meek and lowly heart and you just find rest into your souls Let's just take one minute and pray for those that just don't have that rest and that peace in their heart here this morning. Only God, only God can give us what we need. Heavenly Father, we just pray, oh, the peace of God that passes all understanding. It's here this morning. God will keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. And I pray for those, God, that are struggling here this morning that just can't seem to understand it or let go or whatever it is that's holding them back, that God should penetrate their heart and you'd show them how much you love them and the wonderful plan you have for their lives. And God, you know what you're doing. And through it all, you can make so much more sense than anything we could ever think of imagine. So we just pray then for that victory here this morning. And God, my prayer is just let it fall. God, just let it fall. The power, the power of the Holy Ghost, just let it fall in this place here this morning. That each and every one of us will get so filled up, so rejuvenated, that we're not going to be able to take any more. In other words, you're going to fill this God to overflowing if we allow you. So have your way, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, I'll tell you what. This thing is alive and well. I thank God. Don't you thank God that he's alive, not dead? How many's got the victory in their heart? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's just wait on the Lord. Just one moment. See what he's going to do. I want somebody to obey the Lord this morning. Come here, Barbara. The Lord would say unto you that it was written that they all gathered together and tongues of fire came upon them. And I, and I wish this body that right now you say, Lord, the tongues of fire are upon us. We're all gathered together and we're praising you and we're in your presence. And we feel so good in your lap, Lord. 
But Father God says that there will be a time in this visitation that I'm coming up on this earth, and I'm going to bring that visitation wherever you go, when you go out of here, when you don't feel like you're in my presence, for I have determined to do this. Oh, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, for I am coming, and I determined to do it, and I'm going to do it. Said, did I not say it's according to your belief? So believe that I am coming upon this earth. Amen. Let him come. Isn't that gracious? Praise the name of the Lord. You know, God wants to use so many of us. And he is. This is what is amazing in spite of us. By the way, let me tell you something. Jesus loves you. Sir, Jesus loves you, and you, and you, and you, and even you too, Sam, and you, and you, and you. How many believe Jesus really loves you guys? All you guys that are hurting or struggling, don't understand, God loves you. I don't care what you're doing, what you've done, I don't care what's going through your mind right now, God still loves you. You think about that. How can that be? I don't know. But it's true. God loves you. You know, I don't think there's anything more powerful than you know that somebody loves you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, believe in him, should not perish but ever have everlasting life. Greater love is this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. And that's what he did for us. He laid down his life for us. How many of us have been in jail or prison? Jailer. Maybe you come up here a bit. Yes, ma'am. I met her years and years and years and years ago when she was in prison. She did a lot of time in prison. But she's always had that smile on her face. And she's been out for a little while and got the cutest little kid. It's just good to see her. She just, she wants, she's trying to, she loves the Lord. She's just trying to find answers for her life. Like ministry, where do I fit? What's on your heart? Um, as far as like ministry, I've always wanted to reach out to um, obviously offenders. Um, I was locked up. I was tried as an adult, as a juvenile, so I've always wanted to reach um, like the youth, the troubled youth, and um, the homeless, and just uh, a lot of everything that you guys do so I feel like I'm called to be here to um, to um, you know uh, find uh, follow you know the path that I know that the Lord has for me so hey man you spent a lot of years in prison how long were you in prison uh, 16 years 16 years in prison hey man boy she's she's been but you know what God could make the best out of everything and sometimes, listen to me, sometimes it takes a little of something like that to get rid of our hard head. And if that's, if that's what's need be, how many will let that happen? Listen to me. If you need to get something done in your life, and only God can do it through his ways, will you let him do it if need be? So what do you, what do you see in the future? Are you ready to just go on and fight the good fight of faith and just raise your son, live life to the fullest? I believe that, like, I, uh, everything that I went through was for a purpose, uh, yeah, to give him glory and to, you know, let people know that, um, you know, with uh, God, all things are possible, so. Amen. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a good praise of him. <laughs> it's gracious, gracious to be in the Prince Lord. Bring the crosses in. You know, I hope you listen to this. I hope you never get tired of people carrying a cross. You say, well, you do this every week. Praise the Lord. There's lost people that are getting touched every week. Young man, you've been doing this for a while. Yes, sir. I How come you keep doing this? Old guy like you? Well, there's some scripture that inspires my heart to do this. Can I repeat? Yes, you may. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience or endurance 
the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Almighty God. That inspires me to carry this cross every day because this is nothing compared to the 600-pound dogwood cross that he carried for miles for me. Amen. What do you see? What kind of reaction or what do you see in other people when they see that cross? A lot of people scoff and mock, and I rejoice in their scoffing and mocking because I know that when you're fighting the hardest, you're getting ready to crack and crumble. And I pray for those people that they would come under the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because conviction led me to repentance, which led me to faith. And that faith, I'm not ashamed to testify to the fact that God deposited that inside this vessel. And it's his faith, and I belong to him, and he is mine. Boy, it sounds like you're really getting all fired up. That's the beginning. That's just a tip. Amen. God bless you. How about you there, young man? You in the mission? Yeah, I'm in the mission for uh, Well, I'm going back to Minnesota tomorrow. So you, you carry the cross out there today? Yeah, I did. How was that? Okay. It, was, uh, it was amazing. Um, you know, I came through the, Dream Center, the Church on the Street program a couple years back. And I was on crutches, and I never had. The I remember. Never had the opportunity to do this, and um, the opportunity came up today, and uh, it was uh, very moving for me. I, um, my sins are very heavy, and this, the cross reminded me of that today. Amen. Praise God. All we gotta do is repent. Bless you. That's what the cross is all about. How about you, young man? Um, it was a glorious day, a day that I cannot forget. First time carrying a cross. And God is good. Just being able to get up and have full health and be able to do it represent what Jesus is doing. It's a beautiful thing. Now you're in a mission. Yes, I am. You never went to Bible school? No. You've been perfect all your life? No. <laughs> well, then you shouldn't be carried across. Probably not, but you know what? Jesus died for me, so I can. Amen. <laughs> None of us can deserve to carry the cross <laughs> except for what God said for us. God bless you. <laughs> Young lady? How was it? It was good. You don't want you don't want older, you want to talk? What's God? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I just like to car carry the cross because it helps keep my week in perspective because there's a lot of things going on around here and sometimes I lose sight of where of what's really important and that's God and showing his love into the darkness that surrounds us. So God bless you. She came out of prison too. Bless you. Young lady. How are you? Good. Everybody hold up a Bible. <laughs> that scares her to death. You know what happens when she sees the Bible? I got to live by it. And she does. How was it out there? It was good. You know, actually, there was a lot of nice people out today. Yeah. Everyone said, praise God and thank you and God bless you. Yeah. I wonder if they're looking at you or the cross. Oh, you know, you know, no, but hey. <laughs> Just a moment. She's getting all fired up now. Yeah. We actually ran into um, a guy driving around the neighborhood who was just praying for the neighborhood. And um, he gave us this track that says, think about it, what happens when you die. And it's, um, it's like soul winning, five points, all in one card. It's really, really cool. So we got his info, and he wants to get teamed up with us and maybe help us some outreaches or something. So. Praise God. Just tell him. Tell him to come by. We'll get him out there. So was that fun out there? Absolutely. You going to do it again? For sure. All right. God bless you. How was it out there? It was actually pretty cool. It was actually pretty cool. What would you, you like about it? Uh, a lot of people came up to us and we started praying for them. They, we didn't have to ask them if we had that prayer. They wanted us to pray for them. They told us, can you guys pray for me? It was cool. It was a cool experience. Amen. God bless you. How was it? It's good. Is this your first time? No. Second time? No. Many times you do it? Right. Many times. So what happens to you when you get out there doing it? Why do you do this? I do that for focusing my way in Jesus and for a lot of people in hell in the street. 
and try to take it out the more people as possible, get out here and the good wa the good way they choose it. That's it. Amen. God bless you. You know, God's called us all to do this. We want all the world to preach the gospel. Now, if you want to cop out a little bit, carry a cross. All you got to do is carry the cross. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to learn anything. Just put the cross on your shoulder, and that's all you got to do. And I'll tell you something. God will do the rest. You know, we've been talking about Mill Avenue. We're having a, having a ball doing this. And I know we're having an effect. Mill Avenue is where ASU students party, big time. I mean, they're running up and down the streets. Just I thought they were crazy and going wild until I started going to Scottsdale. <laughs> Man, they got old Scottsdale. They got some bars up there, I'm telling you. I'm about this far from somebody screaming as loud as I can. You know, Jesus loves you, and they can't even hear me. And we're carrying a cross. There's just a few ladies went. Barbara, who went with us the other night? Was there? Stand up. No, it's, it's Scottsdale. Barbara, you there? Yes. Come here a minute. Yes, ma'am. Barbara's nuts. She just gets the giggling. I don't. I think when she gets when she gets filled with the Holy Ghost, she just gets the giggling. How was it for you? There was a lot of people. I mean, a lot. And it just. Just to see all those people, it was a, it was, it was just a lot, and a lot of souls wandering, wandering, and lost. There was one time, <laughs> there was one guy that Pastor Wald was talking to, and he was like, the guy was like doing something to Pastor Wald, and I said, you better stop it. <laughs> I did. I was concerned, and I told Pastor Wald, he said, it's okay, but, but I didn't like it, so <laughs> I stood up. So anyway, it was just a lot of people. It just does something to you. It's almost like, it's almost like, it was almost like you saw the whole world right there, a magnifying glass on the whole humanity that's lost. And they're just doing their own thing. And Amen. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a good praise. <laughs> Think about this. How many have been raised in church, you got away from it, and you party. I want you to think about this. I mean, you're having a party. All of a sudden, you see somebody carrying a cross. They don't have nobody outside. You just see it, and the Holy Ghost just automatically convicts you. Can you imagine that's all it takes? That's why we do this. You don't have to do anything, although we do, we try. But that's all. They just got to see it. Now, we've got to be willing to take it out, take them out. Crosses, no matter where we go, what we do, we've got to be able to tell them, show them more so than anything else that Jesus loves them. And God will do in what he's doing. He's touching people. He's changing people. That's you and I. And he's building people, and he's calling people. In other words, he's having his way in each and every one of our lives. And it's just a matter of us just being willing to listen. Amen. Come here, young man. Mark, real quick. Here's a young man that's all feisty. He came down to see me the other day, and I was really, really busy. And he sat out there, and he sat, I don't know how, two or three hours. Finally, I, you know, the Secretary Terry said, why don't you come back? He just sat there, so I felt so convicted. I got a chance to see him. Wait a minute. And I had, I had something to do. I had to go pick up some printing. Had to do it. I mean, I had to. Because the boss said I did. You know, if I, when the boss talks, she's got a lot of power. No. 
And so I asked him if he wanted to go with me. So I got a chance to really kind of, sh you know, we just got a chance to talk and meet. And young man full, full of the power of the Holy Ghost. And by the way, yesterday, I understand that Will had him go do an outreach because everybody was busy. And so how did that outreach go? 27th Avenue Indian School. Now, don't take a long time. All right. No one went with me. I went by myself. I went and I stood on the corner and I preached the gospel. Yeah. Some good stuff. Got to talk to a lot of people and, uh, and had a couple tracks. And then I, uh, it was the microphone started acting up on me, so I left. I went and I, uh, I talked with this homeless guy and I went and uh, stopped in a, another homeless camp. A couple of guys talked to them for about 30 minutes, helping out. No, it was a good thing. It was a very good thing. So, yeah. That's a matter from own heart. I can't tell you how many times I've done outreaches by myself. Now, we sat in here yesterday and had soul winning, and I asked how many people are going to that outreach, and there was about at least five or six of them that raised their hand. Nobody went? Okay, maybe they didn't know. Let's do it this way. Maybe they didn't know they were supposed to be in here. We also made a mistake. We, had, we do a lot of things, and some of the guys were given a day off yesterday. Quite a few of them. But that was, we got kind of mixed up on the day they were supposed to have off. So we didn't have. But see, a lot of things happen. Like he gets out there, and the, minute the PA don't work. I can't tell you how many times that's happened. Out there by yourself, and nothing's working, and people are supposed to be here, supposed to be there, and they're not. But you know what God said? You go. You keep your eyes on me. Don't worry about anybody else goes. And I'll tell you something. We got this place right now because God put it in my heart just to keep on going. And people come alongside. Once you keep on going, they get the idea he ain't going to quit. No, it's God that ain't going to quit. He's going to have his way. So God bless you. You just keep up the good fight, and I pray. That's an example for the rest of us. Amen. Give the Lord a good praise offering. Well, the boss went to California. She went, she, she graduated, I think, 65 or 66 or so, I don't know, way back then. And she met a bunch of ladies that they, that, you know, when they went, went to college. So every year they, they get together, and there's about nine of them. So they're, she's are going to meet in Northern California, and she's on a plane right now. I can see these old, I mean, these nice ladies just. <laughs> What's that? Oh, careful. So. She's, she's the one that usually wants us to hear the Word of God, but she told me what she wanted. So if everybody would open their Bibles to Zechariah 7, is that what it is? Zechariah 7. Chapter 7. Now in the fourth year of King Darius, it came to pass that the word of the Lord came to Zechariah on the fourth day of the ninth month, Chislev, when the people sent Sherezer with Regemelech and his men to the house of God to pray before the Lord and to ask the priests who were in the house of the Lord of hosts and the prophet, saying, Should I weep in the fifth month and fast as I have done for so many years? Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Say to all the people of the land and to the priests, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh months during those seventy years, did you really fast for me? For me, when you eat and when you drink, do you not eat and drink for yourselves? Should you not have obeyed the words which the Lord proclaimed through the former prophets when Jerusalem and the cities around it were inhabited and prosperous, and the south and the lowland were inhabited? Then the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Execute true justice, show mercy and compassion every one to his brother. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the alien or the poor, let none of you plan evil in his heart against his brother. But they refused to heed, shrugged their shoulders, and stopped their ears so that they could not hear. Yes, they made their hearts like flint, refusing to hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his Spirit through the former prophets. Thus great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it happened that just as he proclaimed and they would not hear, so they called out and I would not listen, says the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations which they had not known. Thus the land became desolate after them, so that no one passed through or returned, for they made the pleasant land desolate. 
You know, so many places in the Bible says, that, yet they would not hear. And I pray we just, just learn to hear. God will do the rest. He'll tell us what we need to do. He'll guide us. He'll do it all. He's got the power and authority, the ability to change our thinking, to change our minds, give it on and on and on. So let's just listen to that. Pastor Danny, I want to take the offering. Good morning, everyone. The praise and uh, worship team come up, please. And the ushers come up. Uh, they'll be having, the ushers will be having an envelope with them. But before I get to that, I want to make a quick announcement. Today, after church, our children's ministry will be having a lemonade stand. Or a lemonade sale, I mean. And they'll have a stand over here by the double doors across from this sanctuary. Uh, the double glass doors on that side, and then up here somewhere in the front by the lobby, probably on the other side of the pool fence. Before you go in to get your meal after, uh, after uh, church, you can buy yourself a cup of lemonade and go have your nice spaghetti that we give after church. Amen. Perfect timing. Amen. So anyways, just a reminder. And uh, if anybody needs an, uh, an envelope, just raise your hand. The, the ushers are here to gladly come up to you and, and give it to you. You know, uh, God, we just heard the word of God about not hearing, not hearing. And there's a still small voice in all of us that wants to speak to us. And God really wants to speak to us and just guide us. And, and this is in one area that God is tapping into our heart to, to, to help us. Believe and trust in him. And, and if you learn to trust in him in your finances, God will truly, truly respond to his word and his promises because we have a faithful and true and just God. You know, and this morning, I'm just, I'm just going to wait a minute. I'm going to let that still, small voice speak to you and, and see what he tells you to bring into this awesome ministry that sowing into this ministry is sowing into fertile ground. And there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it in my mind because of what God's done in my life through this ministry. So let's take a moment real quick. Just wait and respond to that still small voice. Heavenly Father, we give you the praise, honor, and glory. And Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together, Lord, in fellowship and in unity, Father God, to come and get fed your word, Father God. We thank you for every privilege and time that you give us, Lord, to be able to give back to you, Lord, because we cannot outgive you, Lord. No matter what we do in our time and our finances, Lord, and anything that we do, Lord, you top us all. So, Lord, I just ask that you bless those that gave, Lord this morning expand this money lord to reach out out there because you know where this money goes lord it goes back out to touch the lost and the hurting and the broken lord we love you and praise you in jesus name amen, amen. you know god deals with broken people puts them back together and sometimes they still fall apart but god's able to wait we're not ready yet for that anyway what i'm talking about guy that's we met here a lot years and years and years ago. He came, and he started winking. And our music director, her name was Helen. And the next thing you know, they got married. And Jack been here for back and forth for many, many years. Anyway, he's in the mission, and he hadn't done a song here for a long time. So, Jack, where are you? Jack Marsh? Where is he? Well, get up here. All right, hurry up. Oh, my land. Does it work? There it goes. He'll find it. Yeah, we, we had a lot of time at the mission to sit around and, you know, come up with our own little thing. And this is something we did that me and my uh, praise and worship leader came up with called Do Lord. It's a short song with meaning, though. Can we have the guitar? There it is. 
There we go. Go ahead, Dave. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a good praise, Arthur. Thank you, Walt. Hey, step here a minute. We're going to take communion. So if we get the ushers just to pass out, wait, step here, David. Get the ushers to pass out the communion. Just take it, and we'll talk about it in a minute. Everybody take their wafers and their little cup, and you say, well, I'm not ready yet. Well, that's okay. We'll give you an opportunity to get ready. But in the meantime, are you guys in a mission? Except for this one here. He visits us there, though. He visits you there. Oh, yeah. So I'll tell you what. Why don't you guys, how long have you been down the mission? Three months. Three months. Because you were here, too, playing that guitar for, man, they had a tremendous band at one time. And, man, you did, too. You you, you were doing all praise and worship all the time, and all of a sudden things didn't go. Well, but you make dumb decisions sometimes, you know. What do you say? You make dumb decisions sometimes. You ever do that? Once and twice, yes. In a week. <laughs> what do you think about having a mission band? Get them to come up here and. Yeah. We got a name. What's your name? The Mission Boys. The Mission Boys. So what's been happening in your life? Well, uh, I've I've just got together my collection of music of I have over the tw last twenty years, and I'm trying to teach these guys how to we can get together. Worship the Lord and spread the word because that's what we're called to do. We, you know, the biggest thing you can do is find what your calling is. I know what mine is, and we've all agreed in prayer that we're going to let God open the doors. And it, even today was a miracle. We didn't even have the instruments that you see up here for use, but one phone call and it was available. God said, "You just be ready. I'll do the rest." And here we are. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. How about you, young man? How long you been in a mission? Three or four months now. Three or four months now. Praise the Lord. You guys got a little good thing there? You got a guitar? Do you got your own guitar down yes, there? I do. Yes, I do. Yeah, it's been a blessing, actually, uh, ever since we decided to start this thing up. The Lord's just been flourishing us with, you know, instruments, and um, he came with his drum, you know, getting the drum set, and just out of the clear blue. And it's really odd because I hadn't been planning on going to mission, but I, I am the, the home I was renting, uh, the... Um, the owner, he, was, he sold a home, so I went over to the mission because I was waiting for the military to give me a home because I didn't want to go back to that apartment because I knew I'd be doing drugs or something. And I wanted to stay, I wanted to stay right, so I went over to the mission just to uh, stay clean. And you've been there three months? Mm -hmm. Yes. Praise the Lord. So you guys are doing outreaches? we got one coming up this Saturday at the mission. 
there's a Saturday night outreach every Saturday night at the mission for kids. Uh, for kids, and it's generally Spanishly oriented. We talked the leader into uh, letting us come, and we're going to do it this coming Saturday. And I think there's a talent show around the corner. We're going to try to make that too. Well, I'll tell you what. There, we got a lot of uh, outreaches. Yes. Amen. So why don't you guys? Can we ask you? We need a drum set and a few other pieces. <laughs> Go sit down. Come on. <laughs> Can you pray about it, folks? Listen. We got a drum set, ex extra drum set. Wait, but you'd have to come up here to rehearse. That'll work. Talks cheap. Whiskey costs money. We'll, we'll take a bus. Let's see you do it. All right. Let's give God bless you guys. Let's give the Lord a good praise offering. Isn't that neat, though? You know what I like about being a Christian. You don't have to plan anything. God already does the planning. He puts things together. And that was good, wasn't it? Those guys, it wouldn't take them long. They, they got it right now. Just to get out and really just get something going. And that's what many of us need to do. Is God's put many things in our heart for us to do. Because many of us have talent. It doesn't always have to be music. He could, anything. God can use anything. Because he made us in his image for a purpose. He simply just wants us to be willing and obedient. There is the bottom line. We don't have to do anything more than be willing. Now, how many of us are willing? Okay, if you got your Bibles, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Now, we're going to take communion here in a minute. And let me tell you something. Man has got a hold of religion, made a church yossi out of the thing, got all kinds of rules and regulations. And if you do this, 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 and this, and this, and this, you got your three-piece suit on, then you can come to church. But see, God's got a completely different ball game. He simply says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means you're made, you're made righteous. The minute you ask God to come into your life, you'll never be any more righteous than you are in that minute. Now, there's times we might slip and fall back. But he's got a, another one for us. If we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, this is the deedest thing, and this is powerful. It's so simple, though. God died on the cross for our sins. Paid the terrible price. He stands at the door of our heart and knocks. Something's going on up here, in other words. So if you're here today and you're not sure about this or something, but something inside you is telling you, hey, I love you. I got a plan for you. And that's simply you listening to him and saying yes to him. That's it. You'll be made righteous. You're worthy. You'll never be any more worthy or righteous you are for that moment, and you'll stay righteous, and you'll stay worthy because once you've asked Christ, if you've truly asked him to come into your life, he's going to stay in there working in you, accomplishing the plan he has for you. Amen? So let's go to 1 Corinthians 11.27. Therefore, who eats this bread or drinks this cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's, let's just listen to his word, simply. You can't mess around with God. That's exactly what he's saying. You can't play with him. You say, what do you mean? You mean you've got to be perfect? I didn't say that. I said you can't play with him. Some, so many people play with him. His word says, whosoever eats or drinks of this cup, that's kind of playing with him to me. Taking communion when you shouldn't or, you know, God will forgive me this, forgive me that, and I'll go ahead and do it. Well, Ananias and Sapphira did that. They said they were going to give something to God. He didn't ask them. He just said they said they were going to give something to him. And then when I got to thinking about it, it was money. They changed their mind. 
And you know what God did? He killed them. He said, why or what put something in your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, the lie to God? It's yours to start with. He didn't ask to tell you how much to give or whatever. And same way with this. Now, God is asking you to give, give to him what he wants is you. And don't lie. Don't try to manipulate. Don't try to cheat. Either you're going to do it or you ain't going to do it. He says, well, I'm afraid to do it and I'll fall short. Well, we all fall short. Even after you do it, you're going to fall short. But he made the way. He said, a just man's going to fall seven times if he gets back up again. So it's not you doing it anyway. It's him doing it. He's already done it. And he says, when you do slip and fall, which you will, just ask me. I'm going to pick you right back up again. But don't lie to God. Don't mess around with him. And that's what he was talking about here. A simple, simple word. But let a man examine himself. 28. So let him eat and drink of the cup. For he who eats in a drink in his unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment in himself for the discerning of the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you. See, he's talking about what we just are not obedient. We're doing our own thing. He's telling us what's going to happen. Oh, it's going to happen to me. Yes, it will. The simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ is simply being willing and obedient. That's all. That's all we need to do. We can't do anything else. Willing and obedient, and God will do the rest. But we start messing around with him, and this is what he was talking about here. And this is very Serious business. So don't mess today with this communion if you, if you don't want anything to do with God. Don't mess with it. Just leave it alone. Put it under there and leave it alone. Now, you could be the rottenest sinner that, at least in your own mind, that ever lived. You come in here and snocked, up, snockered, half drunk, or buzzed up on something. You ran, ran, you know, come in here to, I don't, you don't even know why you came in here, but, you know, something brought you here. All you need to do in your heart is say, God, I need you. I'm sorry. And you will be made righteous. He didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us. That's why God so loved the world. A bunch of sinners like us. And many of us that have been in jail or prison or really had messed up lives know what I'm talking about when God truly gets a hold of us. And that's the simplicity of this thing. He just wants us just to turn to him, be willing to and obedient unto him. He's going to do the rest. I just want you to think about that. For this reason, many are weak, 30, and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. When we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brother, whenever you come together, eat, wait for one another. In other words, what he's saying is simply be willing and obedient unto him when we come together. And, and he's here in our midst. He's working in us, building us up, doing everything that, that we need. And it's simply a matter of us saying yes to him. How many can say yes to him today? You know, the Apostle Paul, he talks about here in 23, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was buried, which he was betrayed, he says, and give thanks and take eat. Now, he was, he was persecuting the church, the Apostle Paul was. Probably one of the greatest men that fought the church because he thought the church was ruining their religion. When Jesus got a hold of him, he simply says, Lord, what would you have me to do? Jesus was knocking at the door of his heart. He heard it inside. He got knocked to the ground. He said, Lord, what you'd have me to do? He just told him to repent and believe. When, when Jesus said, he told him what to do, and Paul was willing to do it, his life was changed. He went from one extreme to the next because God did it. Now, I want to ask you today, there may, there's some things possibly wrong in your life. I'm sure there are, and you know there's some things wrong in your life, but God's dealing with you. God is dealing with you. Something inside that still small voice that's working in you, telling you that he is the answer. He's the way, the truth, and life. And he says, come on to me. How many of you can just down in your heart say, you know what, Lord? I know what I need to do. I need to turn my life over to you. I need to follow you. I want you to pray with me. And if you pray with me, you pray to God, he's going to make you right, in with, right standing with him. That's a definition to me of righteousness. You'll be in right standing with God. You'll never be any more righteous 
That means you can take your communion without any kind of guilt or condemnation. And that's going to edify and build you up because that's what he wants to do. People that will follow him. Pray with me. Say, dear God, I know there's some things that have been wrong in my life. You're showing me that. You're putting a desire in my heart to be willing to admit that, to be willing to change and turn to you, giving it all to you. Jesus, I believe you died for me on that cross. And you're putting a desire in my heart to follow you, to turn to you. So I'm willing to do that. And I'm asking you, will you take charge of my life? I'm sorry of my sins, and I'm giving it to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible, this Apostle Paul says in 24, and when given thanks, he broke it and said, take heed. This is my body that was broken for you. By my stripes you're healed. By his body being broken on that cross. He defeated the enemy of our soul. He made a way for us because he paid the price for us. And he's saying, now, remember what I've done for you. He says, take eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after sup supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant. You know what the new covenant is? It means the old covenant has been done away with. The veil, to the inner sanctum, so to say, to the holy of holies into God has been ripped apart. A man could go in once a year and he was a high priest. Now the new covenant is we can go into him every day. Not only can we go into him, he comes and lives inside of us. Let's remember that. That's, that's what he's trying to show us here today. This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's, remember, let's take this and remember what he's done for us. We've been redeemed, set free by the power of God. Heavenly Father, we just truly really thank you, Lord. God, for what you've done. Make it alive. It is alive. God, what you've done is a new covenant by your stripes. God, we've been healed, forgiven, set free, new nature, new mind, new heart, power and authority like we've never had before, and a bounce in our step because of us being now new creatures. And we just thank you, God. And I just pray for everybody in here that they get that special, special touch and realize what you've done in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's thank God. Just quickly, give him a good praise offering. You know, he says he lives in, he inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. How many, we have any orphans in here? People, how about people have been dysfunctional? Either you got kicked out of your house or you left early. You're running and gutted in the streets, you know, just living your own life. Well, here was a young man. We don't know too much about his family, but his background, but he's 17 years old. He was probably pretty well established. Seemed to be pretty intelligent. Maybe he was in school, you know. Then all of a sudden, there's an enemy that attacks this country and defeats it and starts taking captives, taking this kid, 17-year-old kid, to another country, a foreign country, the unknown. Place he's never been, 17 years old. How, how impressionistic are we at 17 years old? And what would you do, what would you think, if you were taken away from your family by force, taken to another country, and they're going to tell you what they want you to do now? Well, that young man was Daniel. Daniel was 17 years old, and he was one of the captives that was taken to Babylon from Jerusalem. When King Nebuchadnezzar captured the place. Now, he was chosen with some others to be in service because they, they chose the best. And he was one of the best of his day. And he was going to be in service in the royal palace. And the king wanted him to follow his decrees, follow his school, so to say. And he had a special food. <clears throat> 
and wine and everything. In other words, he had just like here. By the way, it was royal food. It wasn't hot dogs. How many know I'm talking about hot dogs? If you've ever been here for a while, you know what hot dogs are. Man, they had the very, very best. They ate this at the king's table. Basically, the same thing the king ate, they ate. And this was Daniel. But see, now here's the deal. Daniel proposed in his heart. Daniel 1.8. The Bible says, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine would he drink. Therefore, he requested of the chief eunuch that he might not defile himself. Can you imagine, first of all, going to, they've taken you out of your home, putting you in a new place. And they want you to do something, you know, and you're insecure and, you know, you, you know, what do I do? I can't make my stand, can I? Can we make our stand? How many of us, listen to me, we come into this place. How many of us can make our stand? Well, that's what he did. He went to a foreign place and he says, I can't eat their food because it's against my religion, so to say. Eating the king's rations would violate the dietary restrictions of the Hebrew law. Meat would have been defiled. And a Hebrew, can't even say it, Hebrew, could not eat it. Why? Because they didn't drain the blood. They had pork, and it was against the rules, the godly rules of their religion for them to do it. So Daniel determined. Though he determined to hang on to his principle, that he acted diplomatically. But he made his commitment. But Daniel, Daniel proposed in his heart. Means that he was absolutely determined, resolved, that he, whatever price he had to pay, in other words, he would pay that price to do what he believed that his God has told him to do, even unto death. What do you think about that? How many have got that kind of resolve? You know, I was thinking about Mark just a minute ago. And I was thinking about, are we resolved? Have we made a commitment about anything? Daniel made his commitment. I think we need to make a commitment. In fact, I'm going to blow your minds. Even if you don't do it right, make a commitment to do it wrong then. But do it. Wish you were hot or cold because you're lukewarm. I'll spit you out of my mouth. Now, how are you going to know if you're doing it right or wrong if you're wishy-washy? You make an all-out commitment to do it wrong, God's going to show you. Because I'll tell you what, his, his, his rules say, if you're willing and obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land. But if you rebel and refuse, you get devoured by the sword. What will happen? The natural laws, the law of sin, will bring you down. Like the prodigal son, you end up in the pig pen. But you'll come to yourself. That's why we need to be, have a resolve. Make a commitment. Make a stand. Not wishy-washy. And Daniel did that. And I'll tell you something. I can remember when I got saved, I made a stand in my mind when I said, I'm going to serve God no matter what. Don't even know how to pick a wife, don't even have life, and I didn't. But when I got saved, I waited on God, and he showed me. And I was, well, I didn't even date for two years. And I like ladies just like anybody else. Guys didn't date for two years. Man, they were coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> Waiting for God. Listen to me. Because I determined. And I pray you catch what I'm trying to say here very quickly. Catch what I'm saying. I was determined. And God, two, two years later, said, go back and marry what's her name? <laughs> God, one of these days I'll remember it. <laughs> but seriously. And then he called me to preach the gospel. And I didn't know how, and I, he called me to preach on the streets, and I said I'd never do that because I hated it, because I saw a man in L.A. when I was 13 years old turn me off so bad, I said I'd never do that. But when I resolved to realize that my ways didn't work until I became a Christian, and God said his ways are going to work, then I made a choice. No matter what, I said, I'm going to do it no matter what. He tricked me and got me to preach on the street. And then I looked up at him and laughed. I said, thank you, Lord. How many know I'm talking about there? You know, sometimes God's got to get around our pride. He's got to trick us, huh? Come on, come on, come on. 
That's a good thing, isn't it? He did that to me because he knows me. Because if he, God, I told you I'd never do it. I didn't tell God that, but I, I, I had a resolve. I'd never do it. I hated it. But when I became a Christian, and God is so gracious, uh, how he works. Now, what kind of resolve Daniel had, I don't know. But he says, I'm not going to defile myself. And you know what happened? He asked the eunuch. He says, look, I can't, we can't eat this stuff. He said, will you let us try our way? And the eunuch said, I can't because you get all scroungy and the king will see that and he'll kill me for taking off his diet. He's got the best in the world. And Daniel said, give us a chance for 10 days. Everyone on pulse. Basically, he was a vegetarian that he was talking about. Instead of wine, had water and vegetables. Within 10 days, they were examined. They looked better than the other guys. How many think that God has a better way? Now, if we have the resolve and God will put it in our heart, you're going you're gonna to find out what life's all about. And that's, what, that's, what ha- that's what's happening to many of us that are turning to him, to think that, man, I can't do anything. I've never been able to do anything. Right. I've tried and tried and failed and tried and failed. Fine. Get out of the way and let God be God. And see, you can't fail. And so when I made that resolve and I did, he got, Mark got me thinking about that. There's many, many times God called me to go out in the street and preach, and I tried to get people to go with me. They just wouldn't go. I was out there all by myself. No, I wasn't. I had the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because God said, you go, and I'll go with you. You know, and after a period of time, people started coming. They started getting changed. They started getting saved. They, we got them in Got them in different places, and the next thing you know, we got, a, we got our own church. It took a long time to get our own church and our own discipleship program. I took it to everybody else's, and they didn't work, and I knew that, but I, I did it until God brought me what he was going to bring me. I was resolved to do that, and I believe that's the way Daniel was. What do you think about all that? In his heart, he knew what he was supposed to do. He didn't try to change things around to be able to do what he wanted to do. He stood on what he believed and would not bend. Now, does that kind of shatter some of us the way we think? Because I can't do that. Why not? He was determined to do what the will of God was. God, Daniel made up his mind. You ever made up your mind to do something? Good or bad or whatever, you just, you, you flat just says, I'm going to do this. How many ever done that? I was a snot-slinging, hopeless drunk. You know all about that? <laughs> when I got saved, there again, I realized I didn't want nothing to do with that lifestyle anymore. I, suppo- I proposed in my heart not to do that anymore. No. And I'll tell you something, I've had people come and try to get me to drink, put booze in front of my own family. You know, you go to Christmas parties and your family and all this stuff, and they got a glass of wine in front of you. No. I got stubborn. I got ornery. I got locked in. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And to this day, it's been over 38 years since I had a drop of alcohol. Why? Because God put that in my heart. And that's what Daniel did. Resolved. I mean, what, what do I want to go back for that for? By the way, I don't want to play around with it either. You start playing around with it. You know what I'm talking about. We'll get into that in a minute. But once you've resolved or you settled it in your heart, you won't get caught up in sin. You actually lose the desire. Want to say that again? I do not have a desire to drink. I, I go by a bar, and uh, I've said this a million times, but I want you to catch this. And I spent I spend hours in the bar, hours. There's been days I'd go in the bar at 6 o'clock in the morning because I closed it at 2 o'clock, got four hours to do something, went back at 6 o'clock, stayed again to 2 o'clock, time after time after time. Go in there and play, you know, you get to playing pool, you get to running and gunning and playing music and everything in the bars. I look at him now, and I said, God, thank you, Jesus. That putrid feeling, that emptiness, that's what sin does. 
Why don't we get a resolve like Daniel? God raised him up and used him. He was just another human being, but he made up his mind. How many of us just need to make up our mind? I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm not talking about you might not slip back. I'm just make up your mind. I want to live a godly life, a godly and overcoming life. Amen. Amen. Now, can you imagine? <laughs> now, we're here in the Dream Center, church on the street, eating hot dogs. But it's a good place. We kind of like this. Can you imagine going to a place that was like they're cooking for the President of the United States and you're going to eat the same food? And all of a sudden now, you're not at home anymore. You're, you're away from home. You're away from your parents. You're 17 years old. You're going to get to do your own thing now. And, man, they got the best wine in the world, and they got the best food, and this is what they want to feed you with it. And, man, you look around, and the girls are going to be there eating too. The very best-looking girls, they don't want the other ones. They want the best. Can you imagine how tempting he, what that would be? He said, no, I don't want that. I want to stick with vegetables and water because that will defile me. How many know some of the things you're doing is defiling you? Come on. It's every one of us. Now, I want you to catch what I'm going to say here. What I'm saying, why I'm saying this is you don't have to be defiled. God gives you the power and the authority. To be able to live this life. God does. You can't do it by yourself. You say, well, are you, determined? are you determined and resolved? Yes. But there's other ways I fall short. I was so, there's certain things like this I was so sick of. So sick of what it does. Just like with, I couldn't pick a wife. I was so tired of hurting, messed up. Those are the two things. Without a doubt, I turned it completely over to God. I still got some struggles in my life, but I, haven't, I keep picking it up. How many I'm talking about? Now, I don't know if I could give up chimichangas or not. I don't know if I'd want a daily diet of hot dogs. So I'm, what I'm saying is we're all good people. But there's certain things we just need. It's not by might, not by power. It's not by our strength. There's certain things we just need to make commitments on, to be resolved in doing. And that's simply serving the Lord. Amen? Can you imagine that? No. How many... If you were out, how many, listen to this, when you're out of this place, nobody's looking. I'm going to go to Mill Avenue some night or Scottsdale and leave the cross here. Kind of put a hat on and kind of maybe, you know, put a little something, long eyelashes or something, a little beard, and man, I'm going to go to Mill Avenue or I'm going to Scottsdale because they party over there and nobody's going to know it's me. Many of us are tempted, aren't we? We truly, truly are. And, amen. Yes, he knows. But let me tell you something. I'm talking about some people here that know. They will leave God back for a while. We want to just go do what we want to do, don't we? And we know it ain't going to work. Why is it we know it ain't going to work, we still want to try it? And every time we do, we fall short. It, it gets us, doesn't it? Now, I don't know. But I don't even want to look at it that way. I just want to look at the, what God has done in my life. I don't want to go back to that. I got the cutest little seven-year-old, I'm telling you, and she just didn't want to go. She didn't want to leave home today. She says, I don't want to leave you. I want to So she went to the airport, and I called her up. I says, I was teasing her. I said, you still feel bad? I said, I'm going to be here all by myself. But it's you know, the relationships, how God changes things. He changes your mind. He changes your heart. He gives you life. And then you're able to deal with other people. You start caring about other people. How many like that? How many just want God to be God? How can you just, you know, but you got to have a resolve. You, I mean, part of your life, I mean, there's still things you want to do and you're going to battle. Don't worry. About, okay? We're people. We're going to fall short. The very best of them did. But God will be there with us. What do you think about that? So what do we do when nobody's looking? Come on. Some of you here are just really 
doing good in the program, and all of a sudden you get on your day off. Was her number? <laughs> of course, that wasn't your phone. Somebody else's phone. But see, it's, it's so easy for us to be tempted, isn't it? You know what? Let's do it this way. There's, uh, there's some of us here that do this, like a diabetic. You know what they do? They'll eat what they want to do and take more insulin. How many of us do that? Let's assume we're in our way of thinking what we do. You know, well, I'll pray more, or I'll do this, or I'll do that. I'll offset. Who are we kidding? Let's get resolved. If the doctor says, this is killing you, quit messing around, go on a diet. Besides, if you get fat and sassy, I shouldn't have said that. By eating stuff you shouldn't eat. It's not healthy, and the, the doctor is telling you, look, you can't do this, and you continue to do it. See, the, it's the same thing. God's telling you what you can do and can't do. Are you paying attention to him? Well, that's a different story. No, it's not. People are people. We have a tendency to do stuff like this. Amen? What happens when decision times come? What are we going to do then? Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's rich food, nor with his wine would he drink. That's one translation. Daniel made up his mind. I like that one. He made up his mind. And many of us at different times have made up our mind and we've hung in with what we decided to do. Is that right? How many have ever done that? You just, you got, you just made up your mind you are going to do something. Good, bad, or whatever. And you did it. Well, that's what happened to Daniel. He made up his mind not to defile himself by eating the food and the wine that God gave him. Amen. By the way, the Bible says, as we think in our heart, so is he. And if we think this stuff is okay, we're kidding ourselves. Because Daniel's decision came from his heart. Where is your decision coming from? Your heart? Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart. For it affects everything you do. Guard your heart. The way we think about God, ourselves, and others, and then the world determines how we're going to live, what our lifestyle is all about. Amen? True faithfulness is first exercised in small things that are private. The little things, the little foxes spoil the vine. Those little thoughts, those little compromises that seem to get a hold of our life. What do you think about all that? It's not where you are. What really counts in God's kingdom is what you're doing. Steadfast, immovable, and your faith. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Man. You know, Louine went... Goes to Maranatha and she takes people up once, once a month. We go up there and then they give us a pretty good sized gift. That's why she comes in late. How many has ever been to Maranatha with Louine? Maranatha class is a Sunday school class that Louine and I started about, 30, went to about 38 years ago. That's for old people, but that's where we started because that's who visited us. And we've always been a part of that class, except we'd be going to jail and prison, so we couldn't go there, but we're still part of the class. And she meets a lot of those people, and a lot of those people are getting older. And there was a, a lady by the name of Margie that has had cancer for 23 years. It started in her head, and it started moving down and moved all around you. And many, 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 many different operations. And, I mean, she was sick, but she loved the Lord. She, she made up her mind that she was going to serve God, and she did. She was a tremendous blessing. She just passed away. In fact, Louine went to the memorial yesterday. She had a husband that stuck with her for all those years. Very quiet guy, easy going guy, but he had a resolve. He took his vows seriously. In sickness and in health, unto death do we part. 
he made the commitment. He stood near her. That doesn't happen this day and age anymore. How many times have you, because things got a little tough, you, you broke off? Now, is it the power of God or is it willpower that keeps us? Power of God. Does that have anything to do with our choice? We choose, don't we? How are we going to, if we don't choose the power of God, it's not going to work. Now, if you've got to resolve that a lot of things are going to come and happen, you've got to stand on that resolve many times before God's going to kick in. So I believe it's both. God gives us our part, doesn't he? And then he does his part. And I love this. James 4, 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's our part. Submit. We've got to make a choice. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw an eye. What's that mean? Draw near to God? Draw an eye to God, and he will draw an eye to you. And he says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted, mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. There was a pastor, famous pastor, that was doing evangelistic service like Pastor Barnett. He had a church too, but he was doing service. He went to Paris, and he met you know, some of the, the people in the church, and they went out one Friday night and to dinner, and they were going around to, to different places. And all of a sudden, temptation hit him. You know what he did? Yeah, I'll see you guys. Jumped in a taxi cab, told him to go take me back to my hotel, ran in his motel room, locked the door, and threw the key out the window. You see this guy? Some of us need to do that, don't we? Man, we're tempted. We go right at it. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. You know, if, that, if, if, you go, if you're so tempted and you take all the temptation out of your life, you haven't got a choice, and you put yourself in a position like that, you're locked in a room, there's nothing you can do, right? Amen. How many, how many of us are willing to do that? Amen? i got a couple more minutes here. Genesis 39, 11 or 12. One day, however, no one else was around. When he was doing his work inside the house, she came and grabbed him by the shirt, demanding, sleep with me. Joseph tore himself away. But as he did, his shirt came off. And she was left holding it, and he ran out of the house. Can you imagine an 18-year-old boy with a beautiful woman that keeps tantalizing him? He knew better. And sometimes we need to do So what did he do? He ran. He just split. Maybe some of us, man, we better get our running shoes on. How many know that? <laughs> Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.2. Listen to this. Listen to this. I love this. New Living Translation. Run from everything that stimulates your youthful lust. Follow anything that makes you want to do right. Pursue faith, love, and peace. Enjoy the, the companionship of those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. Flee also useful lusts, not only irregular sensual desires, but pride, youth, ambitions, above all, lust for power, to which most men will sacrifice almost anything to get. Their ease and their pleasure and their health and so forth. Useful lust. We need to flee those. This is the most bewitching passion in a human heart, these things we're talking about. Both in the church and outside the church, but particularly in the church. Tim Timothy now, when he wrote this, was between 30 and 40 years of age. And that's when the ambition... And the love of power most generally prevails when you're about that age. Carnal pleasures 
and sins of the youth, ambition and the love of power and sins. They're of the middle-aged people. And the old people are covetous. Isn't that interesting? So we're always going to be struggling and have our struggles and ups and downs. We think about all that. Now, first James 1.13. Let no one say when he's tempted that I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But everyone who is tempted is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Drawn away of our what? Own. Everybody say own. Turn that one next to you and say, own? That's me? That's not you. That's me. Mine. My own lust. Then when desire is conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is full grown, it brings forth death. Let's not play with sin. Let's not dwell on it. Because it will reach out and grab you. I mean, I'm talking about. Well, then it will take root. And once it takes root, you've had it. You can't get rid of it. Of your own strength, no might. And if you want to continue to do that, you're going to be in deep trouble. Continue to feed the sin. Play around with it. Thinking you can, you can do this and do that, you can't. So what am I saying? I'm saying here today, God loves us. He's got a wonderful plan for our life. He's given us everything we need to live a godly and overcoming life. Are we willing to say yes to him? And make the resolve. God, I've tried it. I'm trying it. My heart is resolved then to do your will, God. Help me. Because the Lord helps me. I'll not be dismayed. I'll set my face like flint to do his will. Now I will triumph. Isaiah 50, verse 7. Because the Lord helps me. We can't do it ourselves. I'll not be dismayed. I'll set my face like flint. In other words, resolve. He'll help us to set our face like flint. And I'll, so I can do your will, and I will triumph. Let's quit getting kicked around. How many's kicked around? I've got my hands up, both hands, everything else. We just need to make that resolve, like Daniel did. Purpose in our heart to do right. Purpose in our heart to do right. Purpose in our heart to do right, and let God be God. Amen? Okay. We got some graduates. Let's give the Lord a good praise offering. Stephen. Audrey. You ever, any, anybody ever heard this? Praise Jesus. How's that go? Praise Jesus. How was it? Um, it was uh, smooth sailing. Smooth, easy. You know, like I said, um, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And... Um, it's just all confidence in him. I can't, you know, put no confidence in myself. But um, just knowing that what he's done already for us, you know, that he's done it. I put my trust in the finished work of Christ Jesus. Because I always used to try to do things to become what God says I am already. But now I know who I am. He's, I am who he says I am. That's, I took out my ID, you know. So I should probably put, like, the Bible right here like, this is my ID, you know, that he says, he says that we're made righteous, you know, you didn't give me enough time, you know, I got, I got like a whole sermon right here. Praise the Lord. What's that? What are you going to do now? Um, so I graduated second phase and, um, I'm, I moved out Friday. I'm with my mom. I'm going to enjoy a little time with my mom's. My mom's over there. Stand up, mama, as, as dear mama right there. Oh! Praise Jesus. And um, God bless me. Um, you know, second phase, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get a full-time job. You know, and then uh, three months came. I didn't see a full-time job. And then so I was like, well, I'm going to do day labor until uh, – God shows me something. And then one day I went to day labor, like a month and a half doing day labor. Uh, God showed me. Uh, I went to uh, to work at a job, and then I got hired on full-time at the job over there. And 
And it's the, you know, the best job I had in my life so far. And and God just taking me up. He already gave me one promotion already in the job. And um, it's um going to construction, a metal stud framer. Praise Jesus. And I'm work. I'm gonna work my way up to a superintendent. Oh. So so how does that make you feel? Pretty good. I must have been preaching good. Evidently, because you're believing the Word of God, and it's working. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know what I'm going to suggest you do? Make sure you stay with these outreaches. Amen. I, I, actually, I was, yesterday I went to uh, Ocotillo Outreach with Mary yesterday. Even though I left Friday, yesterday I went Saturday. And then I got my, you know, I got godchildren over there. You know, there, there's some in the Hacienda right now, you know, some god Yeah. They're my God. Well, I'd say they're my Godchildren, but they look up to me, you know. Listen, God, this is this is perfect because God will bless us. I couldn't find a job until I got became a Christian. Not only did I get get a job, but I got a chance to go and lead the boss of the Lord, and he he was a lawyer, and he helped us with church on the street for years. And in fact, his picture is in our office because of and. He used to let me preach there. It's amazing. But I kept on preaching. Are you going to keep on preaching? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm dressed right now as a, I'm a street preacher. And he's a good one. He's a good street preacher. That's what I'm saying. He stands out in the street corner. Man, you get him going, you can't shut him up. He, he was doing the 27th Avenue uh, outreach up here, 27th Indian School. I went by one day, and he wouldn't shut up. I was hoping he'd give me a turn, but he wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know. He, I don't think he knew I was there, but that really is exciting. I pray, and I, he's good. He really loves the Lord. But I pray you don't allow yourself to become resolved to ministry. And don't let yourself, because sometimes it's a little easier just not to do it. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. But, I, you know, the God is, uh, th Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith, and I know he's got it all under control, you know, and I just let him, you know, just go. Uh, I want to give it up to my homies in the overflow. Oh! Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. That's all they'd say. Praise Jesus. But I'll tell you something. He, he put something behind it, his life. You're a good one. God bless you. I, I pray that you stay with these outreaches. I really do. Just don't you dare quit, all right? Amen. All right, God bless you. John. Come up here. How was it? Uh, it was hard. Uh, you know what? The last, mo the last month is the hardest. Because everything's against you. And I made it. You can all make it. And if it wasn't for Pastor Ken, Pastor Walt, I wouldn't have made it. There's a lot of grace and a lot of forgiveness for things that you've done. Or haven't got caught at. <laughs> and I'm being honest. I'm being honest. It's hard. The last month is hard. It's very hard. And everybody knows me. I'm easy going, but you know what? It was hard for me. And I've snapped at a few people, and I'm sorry. But anyway, for, for all, <laughs> thanks. Well, I'll tell you something. I don't care how hard it was. He had to resolve to finish it. Amen. Now, he's just being honest because we are all do the same thing. This is good preaching what he's saying. This, I love this because he's hanging in there. He hung in there. He finished it. Now, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to second phase. You're not getting rid of me that <laughs> You know what? This is what is so neat. This may, he made the resolve now, I pray. You finish second phase. You made the commitment for it. Right. Okay. That's it. That's all he's making a commitment for. So, I mean, say serve the Lord, of course, but he's making a commitment now. And that's what we do. We, we made the commitment. We just need to stay with that commitment we made, that resolve. 
And after that, he, he, got, he, got, he got through the last month. He's still standing. Now, I don't know how devious he was, how he snuck around Pastor Ken or whatever he did, but, <laughs> but I'll tell you something. Let me tell you something. You can't sneak around God. He knows. And he, I'll tell you something. It's God that gave him the grace because God knows his heart and he knew what he needed, and he got him through. And He'll do the same thing with each and every one of us because he knows what we need. Some of us need kicked in the butt, and some of us need to give a, just get a big old hug. That's the truth. God bless you, John. Of course, we had to save the prettiest till last. Audrey, how was it? It was really good. Um, a lot easier than first phase, I'm going to have to say. But second phase will make you or break you. Like, you have a lot more time, and you can come and go, you know, but... If you stick through it, like, I know it was, well, I was on ice, but I mean, it was, I finally, it finally hit me, like, this week's memory verse is 2 Corinthians 5.17, and I'd kind of planned on saying something about that, because it finally hit me in my heart that, you know what, I don't want to go back to that life. I don't want to get high anymore. I don't, I'm resolved. You know, I don't want to do this anymore, and I want to keep just going on for Christ and just doing what he wants me to do and I know the plans he has for me and they're just for good and yeah so what are you going to do now third phase and I'm going to do security so yeah was it fun yeah. through it all through it all yes very fun you feel like you're a brand new person? You got a brand new life because of what God has done? Oh, yeah. Way, 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 way brand new. Definitely. Yeah. And you still got, you know what has hit me this morning? Just one minute. You know when you're young how you're able to bounce? I mean, you know, because we got opposition <laughs> all the time, right? How many are I talking about? When you get a little older, you, 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 you're not as. You're not as willing to bounce. How many are talking about? I woke up this morning thinking, I love the fight. I'm able to bounce. See, when you get a little old, you say, well, I've been through that. Yeah, we have been. But when you got that bounce in you, because God made it that way, you get to bounce right back up. Well, you're still young. Yeah. Very young. Uh -huh. Very pretty, but very young. Young and pretty. So, you, what's some of the things quickly that, that really touched you since you've been here? How have you changed? Okay, so for the first five months, I got to work in the education office with Pastor Bill and Ms. Louine, and for a little bit, Dominic, and everybody else. Who else? Um, it was just getting to watch the girls grow that really touched me. Getting to teach, that was awesome. And, you know, I've grown because... I just, I've grown. I mean, walking with Christ, you're going to grow. I mean, there's no not wanting to grow about it. You're going to do it just because he'll change you. And then your desires become his desires, and his desires become your desires, and you just start lining up. And, you know, I just, I don't know. Stick with it, you know. If you're in first phase, go to second phase, you know. If you're called. Yes, if you're called going to say that but just stick to it you know and you will grow and God's good you just preached my sermon <laughs> stick to it be resolved <laughs> with honors Thank you. God bless you let's give the Lord a good praise offering all right just before we leave turn around and give somebody another hug a departing hug. Danny already talked about it. We got a lemonade sale. If you like lemonade. God bless you. Shake hands with somebody now. Go get them. Have a service in here tonight. Six o'clock. Be back.